the reason why I'm a good salesperson because I care more about what they want than what I want, period. I care more if it's a good fit for them than it is for me. I hold a client in higher esteem than what it is that my agenda is. That's it. Well, my question was about, um, you know, to reach this success, how do I know I'm delivering the value that will create my success? So here's how I wrote it down. Hopefully this is, I want it to be an emphatic yes, otherwise you just keep correcting me, okay? I try to use as many of the original words you use as possible. So you say, how do I know I can deliver value relative to the price I'm charging? Is that what you asked or no? No. I, I, think, it's a re I, think, it's a really, I think it's a really simple answer. Wait, it I want to understand the question, Henry. <laughs> okay, Henry, diagnose. I, prescribe. Right, right, right. But I, so no I know exactly. I could. I get. I'm well, okay, then, the then, then say the question. The <laughs> results that your clients get. That's the answer. So you get one good result, and you're like, okay, next time I can double my price. Not necessarily. No, but you gotta leverage your clients' results. You have to take those results and say, hey, look at what Priscilla has done for me and my business. Does that answer the question? In some ways, I yes. Think I have a wait, wait, wait. We wait. need to find out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just say something. <laughs> I, I need to help you guys with this. I know everybody here has a thousand smart answers. I know that. I know you guys have a thousand <laughs> smart answers. I know Drinkle has a thousand and one smart answers. But here's the thing. Such a polite thank you. I, I, I don't know if I have clarity of the question. And yet there are like a thousand sharks in this room ready to jump on the answer. I don't know, and I don't like guessing. Because here's the thing, you know how hard it is to give advice that somebody will actually apply? It's very difficult. Yeah. There's a business owner that's in front of you that has been very successful doing everything they've done to get to this point in their life. You need to understand that, you gotta respect that. They are the lion, you are the sheep. You need to understand that. You don't go into the lion and tell the lion how to eat. It doesn't work like that. What you have to do is you have to understand their lens, their point of view, their value system, how they're gonna judge success, and you get them to think. You're just trying to help them to think. So if you ask them questions, now people are upset at me, like, you didn't say anything, but you gave me the best answer. I'm like, well, how did that work? Because I'm just gonna ask you questions until you answer it in the way you need to hear it. Because your voice, your advice, is the best advice that you're gonna take. This is the technique, you guys. This is not just by accident that I do this all the time. So if I'm smart enough, if we have enough time, Eventually, even with maybe the language barrier, I will get Priscilla to answer her own question and she'll like, this is amazing. I want you to think of yourself as a therapist. The therapist, you don't just walk in there like, you know you have issues with your mom. It's like, well, we don't know that now, do we? <laughs> but when you actually spent, you've spent a long time in therapy, you and I, you know, it's like, we know. They just ask you really super smart questions. I think they already know the answer because the way they phrase the question is pointing me in a direction. So when they keep asking, it starts to point me. It's like, I'm getting closer and then I say something, boom. That's the power of the consultant, the therapist, consultative selling. This is what we wanna do. We all, everybody in this room wants to rush to the answer. Try, guys, I implore you to try to refrain from doing that. Just ask more questions, get clarity, help them to think. They will come to the conclusion. I have a question. The urge to answer and help so quickly is coming from a very good place. I didn't doubt no, that. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not like, trying that. to justify. What, what things can we apply okay, in our life? Okay, let me ask you this question. Okay. What compels you to open your mouth? <laughs> Before we continue, I want to take a brief moment to thank our sponsor of this video, Vexels. Vexels is the design platform where designers can find everything they need to boost their creative projects. Download from their library of over 90,000 professionally made graphics compatible with all major designer software. They have an amazing team of talented illustrators and designers constantly uploading new content to their site so you'll have access to fresh content daily. It doesn't matter if you're pro designer or if you're just getting started with your creative career, you'll find everything you need on their site. They offer tons of easy to edit business and branding templates for Illustrator and Photoshop mockups to showcase your designs professionally so you can create logos, posters and more in a flash. 
For the more advanced designers, their graphic resources are the perfect digital asset for your new creations. They've got everything from backgrounds, patterns, characters, icons, and more. And if you can't find something on their site, you can always request custom designs and their team of designers will create it for you to download. Save 35% on their subscription by using our link down below. Now back to our video. What compels you to speak to fill the, the gap? What compels you to speak all the time? Me personally? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you. I don't like silence. What does silence equal to you? Monotony, boredom, people aren't enjoying themselves. Why do you feel the need to entertain people to, to make everybody enjoy themselves? That's just a, a just an intrinsic need of my own. Like I feel happy when other people are happy and I'm ensuring that other people are happy. Do you think some people enjoy silence and are happy in silence? I do. Like who do you know that enjoys silence in you. this room? <laughs> <laughs> like Roxy, like yeah. Priscilla. Uh, there's a lot of people who enjoy You're silence. Right. So do you think it's important for you to use one value system on the meaning of silence versus looking at what the person wants? I, I get that. Okay. I get that. Henry gets that. But Henry could not stop himself from being like, yo, I try. You, you, I tried to but stop you're him. But you're not going to be here all the time for us. Right, right. Well, I'm trying to ask you a lot of questions to help you get to the same point. Oh, okay. okay? I see what you you're do saying. understand that. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think we are all looking for validation. That's my opinion. And we're trying to validate that we're smart, that we have answers. And we mm. can't wait to prove it to another human being like, I have the answers. And I'll, I'll tell you stories about how that costs us lots of money, okay? When we're on a call with a client, you try to cut them off. You try to finish a sentence. You know, I really love the color purple. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what I really love about this campaign? Our design. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like after a while, it's like, why are you the idiot in the room? Right? So you know what I do? And there's a darker side to me here. When we get on these conference calls, it's almost always audio only. And I'm sitting in the room with a bunch of creative directors trying to win, you know, six-figure jobs. And the minute somebody cuts off the client, I give them the death eyes. Like, don't do that. Why? This is value. You cutting them off says, I don't need any more information. Why? Because you're desperate to prove you know what they're going to say. And why would you do that? So as soon as we hang up with the phone, I'm going to go around the room and like, what did we do wrong? Don't cut off the client. Don't assume. Experts do not assume. Closing small jobs, closing big jobs, it just takes time. So slow it down, you'll see what happens. Something radical will trans... Okay, Melinda and I are working on a bunch of new whiteboard series, things to help you guys out, but this is weird paradox. If you want to be seen as smart and as an expert, don't say anything. Hmm. Just be quiet. How can we train ourselves better? Actually, nix that question. How have you trained yourself to embrace that when the feeling to speak up and to say something is just so powerful? Like I could see his nonverbals. I can like see he too. was like, you know what I mean? He yes, was about I to know. jump out He's the chair, bro. He's about to jump out. You know? I so I want to get tactical. Uh, I, I believe it. I believe in it. And sometimes I'm weak in the moment. And I'm count like, to five. Oh, okay. There you go. Just count to five. Henry, count to 20. It will pass. It will pass. <laughs> Count a slow, like one, one thousand. Slow down. Look, here's the thing, guys. I, I say this, and, and I know it's gonna sound like I'm bragging. I'm not bragging. The reason why I'm a good salesperson because I care more about what they want than what I want. Period. I care more if it's a good fit for them than it is for me. I hold a client in higher esteem than what it is that my agenda is. That's it. And you know what happens then? When you stop selling, you start closing more. It's the paradox. Like everything that you think to be true in, in these sales situations, it's the opposite of what you think. I'm telling you guys right now, everybody in this room, the next time you go on a client call, sit there and think, how can I be a better service to this person? Tell me here, if you had to choose between five different vendors, one person sold, one person pitched, one person cut you off, one person guessed. The only other person that, that didn't do that sat there and listened to everything you said. Like every word you said mattered. Who are you going to give the job to? All things being equal. Oh, well, the one who listened. Without a doubt. Yeah. Now all things not being equal, there's still a good chance that that last person is the person you're going to hire. 
Drigo, you want to say something, right? I know. I see you dying over here. That's fine. I'll count to five. <laughs> <laughs> well played. One Mississippi.